Hello, Zach. How's it going? Hello, Aaron. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's been a while since we have recorded. It's been a kind of a crazy summer, but we have reconvened to talk about Gamescom 2019. Yeah, it just happened, and it's crazy. I had to work all day, so I did not get to sit in on the live broadcast straight from Cologne, Germany, is where it is, right? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's in Germany somewhere. <laughs> but you watch them all live, and I have done my best to keep abreast a of what's been going on. But we're going to go ahead and talk about things we enjoyed, things we did not care about briefly, everything you want to know about basically the mini German E3 that is Gamescom 2019. First up, let's talk about Nintendo, and Nindies as they, they call it. The Nindies World Showcase. Yeah, the thing that I was most interested from this was that Eastward game that I think we've talked yes. about a little bit on like a previous podcast. Uh, I love the music. Like every time they show a trailer yeah. for this, I'm like, I want the soundtrack already, and I haven't even played the game. Everything about this game, the animation, the story seems great. The setting seems super interesting. It seems super fun to play. There's going to be little puzzle mechanics since you're two characters. Like this seems like an ideal game, and not not just an ideal Switch game, but an ideal game to play in general. Yeah, it seems like an awesome game, and definitely one that I will pick up on Switch specifically. Switch, but is it coming to Steam or anywhere else, or is it a Switch exclusive? Uh, I think it is on Steam. I think it's coming to Steam. I can do a real quick check. You know what? I also, I watched this trailer and I don't remember. Did they announce a release date finally? I don't know that they did. I don't think they did. But it's from Chucklefish, the people who behind uh, Stardew Valley. Not the specific developer, but the, the company behind Stardew Valley. It is coming to Steam. I'm super excited for this. I will definitely get it on switch when it comes out yeah same I, it's cool that it's going to be on steam and maybe other platforms as well but i definitely want to play this on switch so the other one that really popped at me and we can talk about more of these but the two that really popped at me were eastward and that tourist game which was completely not on my radar this is was this a world premiere I think it might have been. Yeah, I hadn't seen this before. So I, I also, it stuck out to me as one that looked kind of interesting. Had a really cool art style, I thought. Yeah, very like uh, isometric and just like blocky. And the yeah. variety of gameplay seems super interesting and cool. Kind of Minecrafty almost. I'm trying to yeah. think of a good way of describing what the, the characters and the scenery looks like. Yeah, it's very similar because it's got that blocky aesthetic, but like it's, you know, it's all voxels or whatever. But yeah, this looks, I don't know what this is. Like it's, yeah. I can't tell if it's kind of like a slice of life thing, kind of like a Stardew Valley where you're a tourist or if it's like, uh, that's what it seems like. Cause there's yeah. a scene where you come in on a boat and you're just like chilling out on this Island. And I'm not sure like if this are, these are just things that you do, if there is a story or if you're just like every day, like, oh, I'm going to go do, I want to go check out this crazy temple today. You know, what occurs uh, to me watching it. I think it almost seems like it could be one of those games, you know, kind of like, uh, what was that toad treasure tracker game where you kind of have oh, like a yeah. grid based thing almost where you're, you can like yeah, rotate yeah, yeah. around it and kind of, uh, do some puzzle platforming a little bit. Yeah. It does seem like that kind of like, every stage is like a thing you have to solve yeah so yeah it was hard to tell exactly how you're gonna play the game or what you're gonna be doing but it does seem like a puzzle platformer maybe so what's uh did anything else i know risk of rain 2 is something that people were really into on steam and i'm pretty happy to see it coming to switch as well yeah i remember people talking about it when it came out but it's, it's not a series i'm familiar with any other nindies catch your eye not particularly the the ones that stood out to me were mostly uh, eastward and the tourist but there's a decent list of them i'll we'll i'll have the list in the show notes so you can kind of browse through it and if anything stands out you can look it up but yeah it was basically just eastward and the tourist that really stood out to me <laughs> should we move on to inside xbox yes your notes on inside xbox are uh, very small compared to everything else. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for one, I think I... So I didn't actually get to catch the Nindies World Showcase live, and I think I tuned in to the Inside Xbox one as it was, like, in progress. So mm -hmm. I didn't see all of it, but they talked a lot about Gears 5, and I, I just don't care about Gears of War. So I, I saw a headline that said characters from Halo are yeah. coming to Gears. 
So that was the one thing. Like I haven't played what does that a, mean? I haven't played a Gears game since Gears Three, which I feel like was a long time ago. And like Gears Two, I recall distinctly because that was like the game that everybody in my dorm in college was playing, and like everybody had a 360, and everybody had a copy of Gears Two, mm-hmm. and basically everybody at all times of the day and night w- was looking for at least one more person to join their like horde mode, you know, whatever. And so it was really fun. So I would say the only passing interest that I would have in a Gears game at this point would be the Horde mode. And so they unveiled a whole bunch of new stuff for Gears 5's Horde mode. And it seems like they're adding, like, these heroes, basically. They're kind of doing the Apex Legends Overwatch thing where you have these heroes with ultimate abilities. And some of them are Halo characters. They're from Halo... Uh, was it ODST or was it Reach? It was, I think it was Reach. They talked about heroes, um, that they brought the, the voice actors, the original voice actors that did, uh, the characters for that game. They brought them back to reprise their roles specifically for this horde mode, which I guess is kind of interesting, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really have any interest in the story of a Gears game. So like all the, <laughs> Um, cinematic trailers that they've been showing have just been like, ugh, can we move on? But uh, <laughs> this seemed kind of cool. I, I still don't think I'll. it's enough to make me want to pick up the game, but it seems like the biggest upgrade to Horde mode in a while. I guess I don't recall Gears 4 at all, but... They did, so I guess there's new controllers coming out in the fall, and then they talked about Metro Exodus 2, col- two Kernels? What is that? So that is a DLC that is coming today as this video or podcast is being released. And it looked like, I don't know about you, but Metro Exodus, just the graphics look insane to me every time I see that game. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about the DLC. I didn't play the game. Uh, but yeah, it's apparently it was sort of a surprise thing where they're like, Hey, check out this DLC. Also, it's coming tomorrow. And everybody mm. kind of went crazy about it a little bit, but I like that. Yeah, I, I always love it when they can show you something and be like, "Oh, by the way, also this is available now." And then they did a segment on Destiny Two Shadow Keep. Is that correct? Yeah, they were specifically talking about the finishing moves. Uh, at least that was the thing that stood out to me. I mean, they talked about new light and how it's coming to steam and all of that and how excited they are to have like an influx of new players who are going to experience it because the game is also free but then it's going to be on steam which probably has a larger user base than battle.net yeah that's Um, probably true but yeah um what are your thoughts on shadow keep i gotta say man i was looking over some content on the destiny subreddit and i came across a map of the moon which we did not ever have in the first game but uh that's such an iconic location from the first game and i have such vivid memories of just like running around collecting those uh oh man i don't remember what they were called what were the (laughs) materials on the moon that were like those tubes yeah i was gonna say i have distinct memories of running around the moon as well but i cannot recall off the top of my head the name of the resource from that planet regardless i got super excited looking at that map because it seems like it's going to be super faithful and i would just do that loop i mean destiny 2 i feel like they put a lot of effort into making all the environments new and unique but i don't really have any nostalgia or like emotional connection to them whereas like the Cosmodrome, the Moon, Mars, I went to those places so much and like was doing loops around them, collecting things and grinding that uh, going back to the Moon is just going to like, I'm super jazzed for it, I have to say. Yeah, it's true. For whatever reason, it, you don't really feel like you need to visit all the planets and like really explore them all that much in Destiny 2. So they, when I think back on like all the planets, the moon in particular is one that like I can remember the route specifically just because I ran around and like drove around on my sparrow on the moon so much. I know the enemy spawns of the moon like by on the back of my hand, you know? Yeah. Well, and you kind of had to, especially like during the House of Wolves DLC when the yeah, wolves true. were prowling. So you got used to that. Yeah. I don't know. I think it'll be cool to revisit the moon. I don't know 
much about where the story is going. They did say the Vex are coming back uh, because yeah. I think the another part of the announcement, I don't think it was part of Inside Xbox. This might have been during one of the other conferences, but they uh, they talked about the what, – what do they call it? Season of the Undying, which is coming October 1st, which is also when Shadowkeep and First Light, New Light, whatever it's called, releases. And so that's going to bring, I, I don't know what the story of it's going to be, but the Vex, they acted like the Vex are coming back. And I'm like, well, the Vex are already here in the game if you want to go fight well, them. But if you'll recall, uh, well, now I'm trying to think about it. I think that each location in Destiny 1 only had two enemy factions on it maybe i'm wrong about that but the vex were never on the moon previous to this i don't think because mars had uh what are the big cabal aliens called yeah they had cabal and vex and moon had fallen and uh hive Hor- hive yeah hive and then um earth had hive and fallen did, did earth have vex i don't think it did Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it did. Well, no, I don't think it did. I think they were on Venus. Yeah, Venus had... Oh, you know what? Venus might have had all three, now that I think about it. But uh, anyway, Vex have never been on the moon, I don't think, so that's an interesting twist. Yeah, and the the like cinematic trailer they showed, had it seemed like they were going back to the Black Garden to like revive more, like activate more Vex and send them who knows where, apparently the moon. Well, a couple of things about that. One... Wouldn't it be crazy if we finally figured out like what happened in Destiny One with that Black <laughs> Garden? Because they probably didn't even know when they were writing it. But also, like, wasn't the Black Garden on Mars? Like, or is it on? Is it everywhere? Is it everywhere and nowhere? I don't know how it works with Vex. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember. It's so long ago, and like Destiny One's story is just so not memorable. <laughs> Yeah. That I mean, I guess some people care about it more than I do. I've never really cared about the story of Destiny. I just play it because I think it's fun, uh, like a fun shooter. But yeah, I mean, if they were able to, I don't know, somehow bring some context to the events of the first game, I think that would be cool for a lot of people. Something else from the first game that I believe that I spotted. There's one Crucible map from the first game that I think, like, I watched people play in the summer beta before Destiny came out. And it's that huge map on the moon. I think it's called, like, Daylight or something like that, uh, where you could, like, use sparrows on it, which there hasn't been Uh, a multiplayer map in Destiny 2 where you could use your sparrows yet because they're all, like, small because they're all built for four people for no reason. (laughs) And so now there's going to be this return of a giant multiplayer map, which sounds super fun to me. Yeah, and that would maybe... Because I know they want to rebalance some of the weapons. They want to make it so that like you can use scout rifles again. (laughs) Because they've been basically useless for a long time. And maybe just like making larger maps is part of that. I'll be interested to see. Yeah. Other thoughts about Destiny or should we move on? Uh, I will say I've been playing it a lot lately and I'm looking forward to cross save coming in a couple days, in a day or two. Yeah. And you're going to take advantage of that because you have it on PC right now, right? On Battle.net. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording, but there was like a month like last year when Destiny 2 was free on Battle.net. And so I added it to my library, not thinking that I would, I was like, maybe I'll play it. Who knows? Maybe I'll never get around to playing it, but it's free. So I'm just going to add it to my library. And now that cross save is coming, I'm like, well, I'm going to actually download this and try it. And it's like 99 gigs. It took a long time to download, but I'm like, (laughs) ready to go i just need to i need cross save to show up so that i can port my ps4 character over and then yeah i don't know how it's gonna work when it goes to steam like i don't know if i'm gonna have to delete it and then re-download it or what but that seems crazy but i also i mean you might i don't know yeah or i wonder because i i want to say most of these launchers you can like right click on a game and be like find game I wonder if I could do that mm. and then just like go to the file where Destiny 2 is in Battle.net and, and just like see if it can open, but maybe it can't. That's a good question. I don't know. There might be, they might have like some tutorial on how to do it, 
because uh, there's like a whole if you go to like bungie.net slash cross save or something like that there's a whole portal for showing people how to do it and like giving you updates about it yeah well and we were t- also talking about i think it's going to be like a huge hit on bungie's like servers or whatever when oh yeah everybody is like downloading on october 1st the if they don't give you like pre-download Everybody's trying to download the free version, but also you got people downloading Shadow Keep and you got like this huge influx of new players and you have like all the returning players, but they have mm-hmm. to move to Steam. Like it's going to be like it wouldn't surprise me if you could not play Destiny 2 <laughs> on October 1st. Yeah. That's I that's likely, I think. <laughs> Man, that's only 2 weeks away. Wait a minute. October 1st is a Sunday. Is it? Yeah. No, I'm wrong. I'm looking at September. Yeah, I was going to say. September I, I, first is I was going to say, October is definitely not a week away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's still August, but no, okay, yeah, Tuesday. Right. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. That makes sense. Yeah. Why don't games release on Fridays anymore? Like, I know that Nintendo does it, but, like, all games should be come out on Fridays, you know? It is strange that they release on Tuesday. It's just, like random middle of the week day like why would maybe that maybe it's happen? to avoid movie releases ha- happening on uh fridays oh uh, yeah thursday nights and fridays maybe i don't know but should we get into this google stadia stuff sure uh so th- i think the biggest news out of this was that cyberpunk 2077 is coming to stadia that's great they spent a little bit of time on that they had a little trailer where the devs talked about it so uh, yeah, I think it's it's cool that more things are coming to Stadia, which all the people that are like worried about Google not sticking to this, like I feel like the more devs and the more like big AAA games that they go to and sell them on Stadia and get them to put their game on Stadia, the more likely it is that Stadia sticks around longer. Mm-hmm. And I think like you can say what you will about Stadia, but I think it's important if only because i want isps to improve and i want internet to get better (laughs) so i want stadia to succeed just because i want better internet man i will say for my job i have to go all around to rural areas and i have seen firsthand that like rural internet is not what it could be it's rough (laughs) to say the least yeah like internet needs to get better and like i forget What's his name? Phil Harrison. He did an interview with somebody where he was talking about, like, right now people worry that Stadia is not going to work well because of ISPs and data caps and just slow internet in places. And, like, that's a common concern because it's, like, a legit issue for Stadia. Yeah. But uh, he said, well, that was an issue... For everyone, when video streaming services like Netflix first came about as well. But what happened was everybody wanted to use them. And so ISPs had to move the goalposts. Like they had to adjust and improve and make things better. And obviously, if you look at where we're at with internet now as compared to years ago when Netflix first came about, like, it probably is significantly better now than it was then. Oh yeah, I can. I mean, I remember early days of Netflix because we. Ha- I had the DVDs of Netflix forever. Oh, so did I. Yeah. And then they were like, "Oh yeah, now you can stream stuff." And I was like, "I don't want to stream stuff. That seems like it's gonna be terrible." <laughs> I remember, man, when I was in college, I would like start buffering a YouTube video and then go yeah, you'd like hit pause make my and lunch. Wait. <laughs> I would go, like, make a sandwich, and then I would come back and be like, okay, now I can watch this. Yeah. And now it's, like, stuff buffers halfway in, like, a millisecond. Yeah, it's true. And so my thinking on this and the reason I want Stadia to succeed, not because I want to pad Google's pockets because I don't care about that. I just want Internet to get better like i want internet services to get better i want it to get faster and like i'm sure 5g rollout will be a part of that but i just want better internet even for like rural locations because like i always have (laughs) terrible internet here like where i am and so that's crazy because you're basically in a small city i mean it's a small city but like Internet is just so inconsistent here that I yeah. I want it to improve. And I feel like if game streaming services come about and 
uh, you have that situation where ISPs have to again move the goalposts and improve things that that can only benefit everyone. So I agree. even if you don't play games, I feel like you should want Stadia to succeed. And for like other s- services like xCloud and whatever else there are, you should want those to succeed. And for whatever reason, right now, if you go on Twitter and see any comment about Stadia or streaming services in general, it's just a lot of people like, I, boo, I want this to fail. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I want better internet. And you're trying to kill the dream. But whatever. Were there any other standouts besides Cyberpunk 2077 that you were excited to see? I know that Doom Eternal is a big one. Oh, did they, they announced uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Was that new? Uh, I don't remember if they showed that ESO was going to be on it or not. I want to say they did. So I want to say you might be right. ESO actually. was already there. The I don't know if it, it's interesting to people, but they did say Orcs Must Die 3 is going to be exclusive to Stadia. So I guess that's one thing. Uh, and they mm. also showed Watch Dogs Legion coming to Stadia, which I don't think we knew before. That's a good that's a good get. Yeah, so that's a pretty good get. Between Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs and I guess Borderlands 3 as well. I don't know if that was mentioned before. Those are three pretty good gets because those are pretty popular games or they will be. Um, they didn't say anything or show anything about uh, what's it called? Oh, uh, Baldur's Gate. Yes, that game. Yeah, they didn't show anything (laughs) else about that, even though we know it's coming. But it would have been nice to have seen a little something, I guess. But they may not be in a situation where they're ready to show anything yet. But Yeah. Well, before we talk about opening night, I wanted to put this in real quick. NVIDIA did a thing, I think in conjunction with Gamescom, where they announced that uh, RTX Minecraft is officially going to be a thing. There's been, I think it was like two months ago, maybe more than that, uh, this guy created, this like amateur guy who has a Patreon, uh, created this shader pack slash mod where you could, it kind of like faked RTX in Minecraft. And you, If you just Google RTX Minecraft, a bunch of videos will come up of people just showing like what you can do currently to Minecraft and it's beautiful it looks crazy but now it's official and it's going to come to minecraft later or actually i don't think they said when it's going to come but you should take a look at the video actually if you if you youtube rtx minecraft this will probably be the first thing that comes up but uh it really it makes the game look insane and as someone who has been playing a lot of minecraft lately i have to say i am pretty pumped for this and i might actually finally upgrade my graphics card have you been playing it to play minecraft i have i uh I started a new world. I'm playing on 14.4, I think, is the current most current version. I got that Optifine, so it looks super nice. I downloaded a shader pack that fakes uh, RTX, but I turned it way down because my computer is Whoa, yeah. uh, not super new. I'm just looking at but, the video um, now. I'll have the video in the show notes, but yeah, this is looking crazy. They've added so much. It's crazy to come back to Minecraft. I stopped, man, years ago, and I just started playing mod packs. I, I've talked about this. But uh, Vanilla Minecraft now, there are a ton of things I was unaware of, and it's been fun to kind of revisit it. Me and my girlfriend have started a little world, and we've been building a little, uh, right next to a village, we have a little home with like a farm and stuff. It's it's good stuff. It's good to chill out after a hard day at work, and uh, this seems like it's going to be a super fun way to play. Well, not to plug one of the series I just started doing for our YouTube channel where we talk about whether you should be playing a game or not or like whether it's worth trying out a game uh i feel like we should do a video on minecraft man i would love to do that i love talking about and watching minecraft uh which i don't know a lot about because i've never played minecraft so it would be almost a dual series if we put out a video on minecraft because it could be both a should you be playing and a uh blind spotting so that sounds great to me and we definitely should do that be looking forward to that so <laughs> uh anyway let's get into gamescom opening night live opening night live this is something i wanted to watch live but then when i got home i looked at the youtube thing and it was like this is two hours and seven minutes and i was like man i don't have time to watch this <laughs> yeah it was a lot longer than i expected it to be i, I don't know why i didn't expect it to be very long but uh, they opened with more Gears 5, so I didn't care about that. And then they um, <laughs> they showed... I don't know if you ever played the 
game Comanche. It's like a team-based uh, helicopter game. And I guess it's like dogfights, if you like dogfighting, which is not like something I'm super into. But yeah, I, I vaguely recall that the, this game existed way back when, and uh, they're doing a new one. So I guess that's cool. Yeah. And then another thing that they like, it was weird because they just like showed like a super short snippet of it was something called, I want to say it was called DCL the game. It was some sort of drone racing game. Is it from the official? Because that's like a real sport now that you can watch on ESPN and whatnot. Is DCL the name of the league? Drone something league? Drone cool league. No, it isn't. Is it really called cool <laughs> no, it's league? it's drone champions league. <laughs> okay. That was going to say that's lazy even for espn <laughs> uh but no i it seems like cool i would be way too stressed out to try this i would like do terrible but watching it just like blows my mind um yeah. so the fact that it's like a vr game seems kind of cool to me again so wait is this a way to train like is this is it one-to-one with how oh, it actually is to race drones interesting yeah that's a good point maybe maybe it would be I don't know what the... It require you to have a control, like a drone controller. I'm sure somebody's rigged complex. up a drone so that they could just use an Xbox controller. Yeah, that's a good point. Somebody somewhere has done that, so... Uh, anyway, yeah, they didn't spend very long on it. It was very brief. And then they moved on to uh, Need for Speed Heat. What is your take on this? Because, like, I feel like it was last week or the week before... It was like the number one thing on trending videos on YouTube. And it was like, need for speed, heat. And it showed, uh, I think, zero gameplay. Uh, and I could not, it seemed like a kind of a, going back to the streets type thing. Yeah. There's going to be like a story, a story mode, it seems like. What? Uh, it seemed like, yeah, it did I, seem like they were going back to, what was that need for speed underground game that was like very um, Fast and Furious inspired? It seemed like they yeah, were trying see, to do that. I could see like Fast and Furious undertones. Yeah. I'm wondering like how much of a narrative there's going to be. Like it's basically a racing game. So how much could there be? You know, it's like, is it going to be? This is what I don't want it to be. Race cutscene. Race <laughs> cutscene. I I feel like that would be. Didn't they not fun. do a game that was supposed to be like very story and character driven? Like a couple of years ago. Maybe this is like the new Need for mm-hmm. Speed, where they have these like story driven games and i just i don't know i'm not interested in that they had a a movie do you remember that with aaron paul i do remember that man and it had michael keaton as like the was he the bad guy what am i making that up i don't know that sounds crazy though i vaguely recall that movie i saw it way back when but yeah like i don't know why need for speed is suddenly being story driven i feel like they could get by with just the racing but that's just it's me. a good name, you have to say. I mean, Need for Speed, just like brand recognition wise, is like, oh yeah, this is a racing game I want to play. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not true. really into racing games. I mean, way back in the day, I was like growing up on N64 and GameCube. I used to play a lot of racing games. Like I played uh, the Burnout games, and like Need for Speed Underground was cool. Um, Need for Speed Burnout Hot was Pursuit. Fun. That was the one where you could crash, right? Yeah, yeah. Me and my friend used to play that, and it, there was, like, a challenge mode to see who could, like, cause the most damage or whatever. Yeah, that was great. That stuff was fun, but I don't really care about, like, racing games that much anymore. It's just been too long. Did they show footage of Kerbal Space Program 2, or did they just announce it? It was more of a cinematic trailer. I would be very interested to see what that looks like. Did you play the first one? I watched... Man, I don't remember who it was. Some YouTuber who did like a he used to do like crazy builds in Kerbal Space Program Program One, and uh, just like the physics and the way everything is placed together in that game are crazy. So I would be interested to see what kind of improvements. Like, is it graphically way different, or like what did they add? I I don't know. I that's something I would definitely not play, but watch someone play a bunch. This Predator game, though, it, oh, this is another thing. I So I, I clicked through a couple of the trailers from Gamescom because I didn't watch the whole thing. But this Predator thing, I'm a little interested in. I like Predator as a, a game. I, the, man, Alien vs. Predator 2 was a PC game that I played a bunch of because the multiplayer was so fun because you could be an alien or a Predator or a Marine. And you could, there could be any number of all of them. It was a free-for-all. Uh and that looks super fun. This seems to be only 4v1. Is that right? Yeah. So this, it made me think of Evolve. You remember that game? 
Ah. Where it was like monster versus like a group of yes. four. But like that more didn't really work. It it was like really hot on Twitch for like a week and then it just disappeared yeah. after that. Um it was fun to watch. Like I didn't really yeah. wanna be like I don't know. I find the idea of like four V one kind of intimidating. Like I don't want to be the one guy. Um mm-hmm. but watching it was a lot of fun. Um I would definitely watch somebody who's like super good as like the predator play this game. Yeah, that would be fun. Um I it seemed like it was only on PS4. That was not clear to me. Like it was during the opening night live where they have like games for every console and PC and most of them were specifically saying at the end, you know, PS4, Xbox One, PC, Switch. And then this one had like, you know, the Sony sound that happens at the beginning and like the blue with the logo at the very end. So I I was like, is this an exclusive? I'm not sure. But (laughs) anyway, it's supposed to be coming next year and it looked kind of good. I don't know. I'd be interested to see more of this game. Yeah, I would check this out. Uh, Let's skip down. Unless there's something else in here that was interesting to you. No. Nothing. Oh, I will point out this disintegration game. Oh, I watched this. Yeah, I watched uh, the cinematic for this. Which I want to... Didn't they say that it was by the... A co-creator of Halo. Yeah, co-creator of Halo, which was interesting to me. And you're basically on this grav cycle is what he called it. You're like a grav cycle pilot... Are you only on that cycle? It didn't show any other... Like, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, oh, this is like a four-person co-op game. But then I was like, wait a minute. It's only ever showing one person's perspective. Are you just up high watching everyone else do everything? No. So you're... They said there was was a first-person shooter with real-time strategy elements. So I think what you were seeing was, like, the forces that you can command down on the ground while you're like flying around in this grav cycle and so somehow or another you're going to be like shooting at enemies but also like commanding your little minions or forces to go around and like attack from different angles or something like that but you're always on that grav cycle up high i believe so at least that's what it looked like from the trailer and they did say there was going to be like a full campaign and multiplayer so i don't know It could be interesting if the co-creator of Halo is somebody you want to follow and (laughs) see what (laughs) games they they have up their sleeve. Keep an eye on that one. Yeah. Uh, Are you interested at all in Darksiders Genesis? A little bit. I like Darksiders as a universe. I played the first two games. I need to play that third one where you're Wrath or not Wrath. uh, Is it Wrath? First one is War. Then you play as Death. What's the other two horsemen? Wrath? Uh, it's not Wrath, is it? I don't know. Pestilence is... Anyway, the girl with the whip. That's one I want to play. I'll probably get it when it's like 20 bucks because I am not super invested in that series, but I do enjoy it. The first one was basically Zelda with like a crazy art style. And then the second one became more of like a God of War clone. And the third one, I think, is kind of like a Dark Souls clone, which is less interesting to me. But well, that's I still why, like the universe, and I want to. That's see why this is interesting goes. because I think they've gone in another direction where they're imitating somebody else. Because this, it was a. Li- this looks like Diablo. Yeah, too. it's a little more isometric, a little more Diablo like. Um, and so I don't know. I was curious if that was interesting at all to you, since I know you like the series. I don't know. This is another one where I would watch it. I mainly just want to get the story beats of it because I I like the third person gameplay of the first two and probably the third one. And I don't really, I don't super. I don't love Diablo as a kind of game, I have to say. Yeah. I know that's sacrilege to say, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, so another one that was interesting to me was the interactive thriller called Erica, which is not a good name, I guess, but inter- not that the name Erica is not good for a person, but like as a game. What is an interactive thriller, Zach? It's, it looks like, what was that show that was on Netflix where you could like, make choices bandersnatch yeah that they were like they themselves made comparisons to that they're like is this going to be another one of those and they're like it's more interactive than bandersnatch but the idea is very much the same i want to say where like um 
where you have. Wait some, a minute, is this an FMV? Yes. So, like, what's a good example? You're, you know, in like heavy rain, you're like watching a cutscene, and then like a little thing will pop up, and you'll make a choice. Right. Um, and then the action will continue from there. It's like that, but mm-hmm. it's like you're watching a movie, and then like two dialogue options pop up, or like two um actions pop up and you choose which one and it'll like cut to the next shot and they'll do that thing hmm. uh it's like 10 bucks it's out now i guess it was supposed to have come out by the time the live stream ended so i you could try it out now it seemed like an interesting idea i'm not sure but uh, and then they moved on to like the heavy hitters at the very end of the show so they had call of duty modern warfare where they discussed a, that there was going to be an open alpha on PS4, but I don't recall what the date was. Do you remember that? No, I did not watch this because I'm not super skipped into past Call it. Of Duty. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, this one looks more different than any of the last ones in the last like five years or so have to me. So I think on that level, it's interesting. But yeah, I don't know. I've been out on Call of Duty for so long that. I don't know if this uh, if I'm going to jump back in or not, but in that case, we can move on to the big story. Yes. Death Stranding. Okay, so the way I watched this, I didn't watch any of the stage presentation because I don't uh, I don't enjoy banter on stage. I usually (laughs) even when I watch like the Oscars, I usually will mute during actually I'll watch almost the entire thing on mute until they announce the I don't know. I don't like that live having to do like stage stuff. I, I don't enjoy that, but. I did watch the three basically gameplay slash character uh, reveals that took place, starting with the six minute one that began with Norman Reedus uh, going to the bathroom. <laughs> oh yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, so he there's like a an option to urinate, and they wanted to for some reason Kojima wanted to make it very clear that. While you urinate, you cannot swing the camera around to see Norman Reedus's uh, private parts. And so when you try to swing the camera around, he'll just turn away like he knows you're trying to <laughs> sneak a peek. Uh, but it was weird because he like finishes peeing and then like a giant mushroom just like yes. spawns out of the ground. What is that about? And I was like, what is that about? Is he kind of like grab it or something and then he just walked past and i was like okay i guess that's a mystery for later i read because i read like a text basically of what happened on stage and kojima you probably watched it but he said something like hey if you go to the bathroom in the same place more than once something good will happen oh so if you urinate on the mushroom who can say man who knows what's going on with kojima it's true for months now he's been saying guys it couldn't be more simple it's a strand game and everybody's like what does that mean (laughs) Uh, so big reveal jeff Keeley is in this game for some reason (laughs) they showed he said he was going to show some new characters there was three different little trailers that he had brought with him and one of them was jeff Keeley is in this game yeah what a weird thing i guess i guess it makes sense they're like best buds now so why wouldn't he be in the game and then like man it was so crazy because i still i still don't know what this game is and it's a strand game be, come on i mean you're right about that <laughs> i have to agree but uh he like he's walking around and then he finds like a bunker and then he deposits something in the bunker and Jeff Keighley's like a hologram in there and like stuff goes crazy when he deposits it. There's a cool animation. And then he leaves the bunker and that hologram Jeff Keighley is like, hey man, thanks. And he just like jumps around and waves at them all happy. And then he like walks off, falls the off a cliff <laughs> and the baby starts to cry. And then you like you can do like a thing where you grab the baby and then you shake your controller kind of to rock the baby to calm it down. Well, you don't want to shake it because that would freak the baby out. So you have to like kind of rock your controller gently, gently the way you would using the gyros baby. in the PS4 controller. Yeah, but uh, man, I don't. I still have no idea what this game is. Yeah, it's not really getting any more clear to me. I, they said it was an open world action game, and they said that the, you're kind of like retaking areas or like connecting them to each other. So maybe you're just like 
going to a like a city or some sort of settlement to be like, uh, this is mine now. Let me set up a like comms relay or something, and we can get people out well, here. When you deposit your thing or whatever in the gameplay, it did for a second zoom out and show a map of the like United States, and you kind of like popped up as like a there's like a straight line going from basically like kind of where New York is, and it seems like it's going westward. And he popped one up, and it seemed like he was in the middle of America. So maybe it's like a you just have to walk west for the entire game until all of America is connected. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's like um, the journey west. Uh, what is the historical figures that did that? Who's the mo- is the baby the monkey? <laughs> no, not that journey to the west. I was talking about um, Lewis and somebody. Clark. Lewis and Clark. Yeah. Uh, the no Clark. I think Clark. Is what it is. I think you're right. It was Lois and Clark. Uh, adventures westward with a monkey. The, no, but they, it could be that. It could be something like that. I think it was interesting also that they showed this idea of like the other side. And you had this character, one of the other characters they introduced was called Mama, who had given birth to a baby on the other side. Like, and the, so the baby is stuck there somehow Mm -hmm. and she had crossed over and, but they were like still connected by umbilical cord. And Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the upside down in stranger things. Yeah. So I'm curious Uh, how all of that works. (laughs) When is this game coming out? It's coming out in like February, right? Oh gosh. Or no, it's coming out in November. Is it coming out this year? I cannot wait to play this game because I have no idea. November 8th. Man, that's is that right? That's like a couple of months. I there, I don't know. Like it's crazy that we've seen so much foot of this game, and I still have no idea what it is. <laughs> it's true, and like I said, every time somebody asks me, like I still don't know what this game is about. He's like, guys, guys, it's a strand game, <laughs> and everybody's still like, I still don't know what that means. I want an in depth interview with him. I don't know. I have not like scoured the internet for one. I'm sure one exists, but I would love to just. For someone to just ask him a bunch of straightforward, like, what does this mean? Why is it this way? And uh, for him to answer. But I don't know if we'll ever get that. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure he would give you even more cryptic things cryptic, that just yeah. don't make any sense to you. But yeah, I'm interested in it. I want to see what the game's all about, but I'm super confused. And my my fear <laughs> is that once you're done playing the game, you will still not know what it was about and what... <laughs> what you did or what happened because i feel like most of the people who've played the metal gear games couldn't tell you what those games are about well metal gear solid 2 has an insane ending that could have a lot of interpretations metal gear solid 1 has a pretty straightforward ending but uh i don't know man i i I, mean i think he is like a creative genius like who's come up with this stuff at all like that's it's crazy but a lot of it is so out there that it doesn't necessarily make sense, maybe. I'm into it. I, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to pre-order this. I'm going to pre-download this on my PS4. I mean, I will too, for sure. But <laughs> yeah, I'm worried that I'm. it's not going to be more clear for me by the time the game is over. <laughs> Did they close the show out with anything cool or was the Death Stranding the closing thing? That was the closing thing. I was hoping they would have like a one more thing, but they didn't. That one more thing is going to be later in the week when they have Cyberpunk 2077, that hour long. That's something mm. we should do a video about because I'm sure there's going to be so much to dig into about that. I really want to see that uh, like cyber whip thing that is from Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. If it is true that they do end up going ahead and showing that off I or just like releasing it, I definitely would do a video about that. So. But uh, yeah, keep your eyes locked on this channel for our infrequent but very quality <laughs> uploads. Yeah, and I want to do... You've been doing a great series about uh, games that maybe you should play that people should check out. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoy doing those videos, and I kind of started the idea with uh, the ESO video from a couple weeks ago, and then I did one this week about Fire Emblem Three Houses, which you should go check out. Uh, I really enjoy that game, so... <laughs> The Elder Scrolls one made me want to play Elder Scrolls Online, which I thought I would never want to do. Well, I feel like 
part of it is because like you see a trailer like a cinematic trailer in particular for a game and you just don't like it doesn't give you enough of an impression of what the game is to really yeah. so like it's not enough to get you to want to play the game so like if you see something a little bit more in depth that really like digs into what the game is and how it's played and what some of it looks like then maybe you get a sense of whether it's worth playing or not and so mm -hmm. that was kind of the idea behind the series and so i, I want to keep doing more videos like that especially if there's a game that comes out that I've been playing and enjoying and I feel like more people might enjoy it if they just knew what it was. So anyway, I would do more of those videos. So keep an eye out for those. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>